Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're doing a flip through of the industrial journal. I finally got it done. I thought I was done and I did a, I even recorded it and then I, I hadn't done the backs of some of the tags and things and I wanted to put some cello tape in so I had to do that and I've just got it done. And then we're also going to see as bonus uh, a little shop that I just got done doing. I had to make some more cello tape, and here it is. It was really dark. Um, that one color latte is the best one. That's the one that lightens it up a lot. Uh, and so, since it was so dark, especially in the center where it's curled up and it flowed that way, I put some of that gold on it. So uh, I'll make some more cello tape in a few days uh, for some other project probably. Uh, let me get you down here close enough to see this baby. All right, as you know, I took, I took these. This is what this cover is created out of. I've had this laying around forever and ever, at least two decades. And this is what you get. Now, of course, they're all stuck together with these little knobbies here. So I had to cut it down to where it would fit, as you can see. And so I got that part done. Then I did a little spray job on it with different kind of distress sprays and oxides. Not too many oxides, but you can see how it got milked out. That's the oxide. Um, then I did some mica spray on it. And I still didn't think it looked metallic enough. And so I go and I take some copper foil that I got from Michaels and I cut that little piece out and I glued it on the back side and then <laughs> I thought that was too bright and I put a little foundry wax on there and that kind of dulled it down and it also distressed it plus these this is um the these little dots here are made with this it's a dimensional fabric and craft paint and you can just, I, I didn't want to use a bunch of little brads. I didn't think I had enough of them anyway. So I just put that little dot on there and let it dry. And then I put a little bit of foundry wax on it. And it, it's a little messy, but that's okay. This is distress. This is um, grungy. So that's okay. <laughs> I did a little flick and you can just barely see little parts of teal on here. And then... The back is the same. I didn't spell out anything. I didn't want to be cutesy or anything. So it's, it looks like a license plate to me. And then on the cover, or the spine, I mean, I had stamped that one stamp numbers, and I didn't think they were metallic enough. So I went over it with some copper, and I kind of just staggered it a bit so you could see a shadow with the one I had on there before. And I thought that really turned out nice. And as you can see, it's like a real pretty copper glowy kind of thing. Thank you, thank you everyone for coming to visit me. I really, really appreciate you. Um, I hope you get to see some things in here that might give you some ideas. Especially this cover. Everybody loves this cover. And so, I really hope you, you take an eye <laughs> at something you have in your, your house, your craft room. And think, oh, what could I do with that? <laughs> That's what I love to do. All right. And then, of course, the cover is made out of pizza boxes or cat food boxes. I think I layered about three of them together. I never did fill this, but that's okay. I mean, you don't have to fill every pocket that you've got. This is that little medicine bag uh, that I folded up and I decorated with some, some scraps and a few things I had laying around. These two pieces were from a... um sunflower art farm stamperia i loved the idea of the keys on a board because i was trying to get a little bit of vehicles in here and then amy had put vehicles in her kit a few of them so that's where the old truck came from he's kind of bright he's in, but he's at the beginning of the whole thing so he's okay um yes i'm going to link down below the two kits that i used in here i used abandoned and I used um, the grungy kits from Crafty Cat. And uh, she's on Etsy. But like I said, I'll have her link below. And uh, I'll have her also in my uh, title. 
here we go. This is the abandoned, especially. I've got them mixed in here, so I can't really say which is in which kit. Um, but I did have this old thing. It's like a, a pad from Crowded Attic with Tim Holtz. And in, in one of my last uh, videos, you'll probably have seen where I used a lot of these. I used a lot of them. It was hard. I had I was running out of um, vowels. <laughs> it's like I was on Wheel of Fortune. I need a vowel. <laughs> but I was trying to spell out words. Of course, this one took three of them. Um, so anyhow, that, <laughs> that, that's what happened. Oh gosh. And then I was putting together these, uh, like pocket scenarios in one of my last videos. Here is a few things from Tracy Fox. She had junkyard tags as a freebie, I think on her, I don't know, <laughs> it's just one of her pages. And um, so I got three of those. I thought they would fit in here well. These she had some beautiful people. Now, this I can tell you is from the grungy kit. Uh, a lot of times I took the grungy and put it on the back of the abandoned. And thank you, Wayne, for telling me about abandoned. I had made the cover, just the cover. I didn't even have the wood on the inside because the wood grain reminds me of the big old planks we used to have down at the old house. And then um, I put tea bags in here to kind of hide that little crack. And I didn't want to have anybody be able to see under there and see the raw makings. Um, so, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> and here we go. When you cut out a lot of her ephemera, you had all these strips. And, of course, the background um, was actually colored in a lot of the ways of the strips or the backgrounds or in, on the ephemera pieces, I mean. So I made like a bunch of boards out of it. I made it look like a bunch of boards kind of all glued together. And I put a little bit of my washi here and I let it go. <laughs> I just thought it was something different. Now here, this piece was from Beverly. Miss Beverly in Canada, she sent me that. I have no idea what it is, but it reminded me of when we played in our old GMC truck out in the field. And it was old. It's like from the 60s. Uh, it had either this kind of lining on the seat. Of course, the seat's ripped. So you can see inside of them. But yeah, I think this is like in there. It was holding in all the padding. Uh, so it really reminded me of this. Now over here we have this little guy he's out gold panning or something but this is a a side tuck that goes all the way up and then it comes all the way down here i also have the word rule down there <laughs> i use upper and lower case because i was running out <laughs> and here we go with a little bit of uh, pink monarch print is in here i needed um and she has a grungy kit too so Crafty Cat has pockets, and it's it's unique because her pockets are pockets. <laughs> so that's what's in this kit, and um, they're all very, very cute. I love the way they look. They're all varied. They're all different. Of course, I use painter's paper on the back of the papers that I sprayed. So it would, um, I would, it, the backs were kind of, eh. I didn't like them, so I wanted something, and this craft color goes so well. This is Pink Monarch, of course, but the craft color goes so well with the colors in this kit. I loved it. Okay, this was just a piece of scrap that I had, and I needed to make a few extra tags at the end. You always, you know, have a few empty spots, <laughs> and you need to fill them. This is another <clears throat> junkyard tag. And this one really reminds me of the GMC. It had that same kind of headlight and a grill. I think it had a big old airplane thing that used to be up on the, the top of it. Uh, but it had cracked the wings off. It was like a, some kind of hard clear plastic. Now here's a little bit of cello tape with this old lady. And... It's got a, it's got enough journaling space in here. I really like that. Now there's another one of those pink monarchs tucked in this pocket, and I decided to put this old uh, gold miner 
on that pocket. Kind of reminded me of a jeans pocket. This was a little bit more Pink Monarch. She, I got her grungy kit a long time ago, and it, I just needed to fill some spaces. <laughs> um, this, there was a piece or two of Tim Holtz abandoned. His name, his name for his paper pad was abandoned. It's an eight by eight. So I put that in here as well, because I, I thought the colors went really well, because you can see the teals and the oranges. This is part of. The seventh birthday uh, of Tracy Fox, creative, and it also had my two colors, so I went with it. And then here's another little, oh, that's supposed to be under there. There we go. So it doesn't disturb this one on this side. And as you can see, there's so many beautiful abandoned houses in here. <clears throat> it had some, yeah old vehicles that were abandoned and her tags even have the old abandoned houses i love it love it and then i try to creatively put her different pieces of ephemera in here because she has a whole bunch of people on two pages and then a few buildings and stuff there's some more cello tape And then over here, I stacked and staggered these to kind of create a pocket. <clears throat> this here says, positively no admittance. Sorry, it's early in the morning for me, so <laughs> I keep getting a frog. And this little pocket here was really cute. It's just a little tiny guy. He's only this big. Little skinny, wide pocket. So I built this kind of thing with a cabin down below and this old timer he's just stuck down all the way he's just background but that tag goes in there of course you can write on the back of all the tags they're writable and <clears throat> any of this could be written on i don't know that anybody's using any of my my journals for writing <laughs> uh, but they're meant to be that way I'm always trying to make sure there's secret writing spots and things like that. This is really interesting because this is a CD pocket that she had in her kitchen. Yes, too. There's another one back here. I chose to make them a wraparound. So <clears throat> I glued this one down this way and have this beautiful lady on here who looks like a younger version of this lady. And then over here, the two flaps that were on the side, I glued them inside of there onto this. Now, sometimes that, it, it catches right down there, but, I mean, it doesn't have to go all the way in. And then I just kind of glued it right there, and it worked out. See how pretty those colors are? And, you know, they're a little off, but they're close enough for me. She also had this, which is... I think like an envelope. Now I put the, um, oh gosh, what is that? <laughs> I put the pieces inside. I can't get it out of there. I put the little clear plastic inside from old packaging that I had. And this is uh, the Pink Monarch again. I just needed a real big piece to go on each side for journaling. Here's her tag that cut with the old pretty old house. I love anything with keys, locks, keyholes. They're my thing. <laughs> They're my jam. Um, and on this side, we have this lady. I didn't fill that pocket. That's for whoever. <laughs> it's going to the shop, so it's for whoever. And here is another old car. Boy, that one's got stuff on top of it. It's actually still got its tire, which is good. And here's another little cl uh, collection of pieces I put together to make that pocket. And then we're getting into the second signature. It had two signatures. I forgot to show you. <laughs> there you go. And uh, it's a hidden spine. I never did uh, uh, explain that it is a hidden signature. Hidden spine. Yeah. Both of those. <laughs> so that is my favorite way to do it. Uh, I, this was just like a little scrap. I was using, I'm, I'm making up some tags to go to the shop with, 
you know, the Crafley Hall on it. I'm experimenting to see if I can make something to take down there to sell. Because I'm not doing another journal. <laughs> so I had some scraps of that. And then here's an, another little guy in this pocket. And I did get into the ephemera for the abandoned. Well, I got all the abandoned ephemera made and put in here. And then I was kind of low on pockets and things for the second signature. So I got into her grungy kit. So you'll, you're will you seeing a lot of the grungy stuff. Not this, but this is. And these people I'm using. Uh, I have a little bit of cello tape on them. Another one of those gorgeous uh, old houses. I just love the vibrant colors in this. Over here, she's got an old house behind her. Can be written on if you need to. And this lady, she was a perfect pocket. This was a piece of scrap. It's close to the color, so I thought it would be okay. And then I put this little guy down here below her. Like that's her husband or something. And over here is an old couple. And then this young guy. And it's... I was using some of that old uh, craft cardstock for, you know, the background or the frame. And see, it's it goes exactly. So, <laughs> if you need to make pockets for this, that's perfect stuff to do it with. Um, now, this, I, I spelt the word numbers. And then it has numbers here, which I thought was neat. This is another one of those Tim Holtz pieces. Over here, as you can see, I made that into a pocket. So one of her tags is in there. And then I decided to put this lady in behind there because she's kind of hidden. Here's another of her pocket pockets. <laughs> another beautiful old house. I just, I'll go down the road sometimes and I'll see these old houses and I'll just kind of come up with stories in my head about them. Uh, here's a little girl here. And then the word vintage was in this uh, grungy kit when I printed out all these people. And there's another one. And a lot of times I put like these people behind them or just as a, um, like a, a topic to see and pull you into the page. A focal. I meant to say focal. <laughs> there's another little piece of that craft card stock. And... This was just a little extra piece that I glued onto there, but it almost looks like it's part of the same thing. Uh, here's a beautiful lady here with this floral page. And this is uh, one of the other tags from Tracy Fox, Spread Your Wings. This was a second uh, stamping. I had the one on the envelope back there was the first stamping. And I said, well, let me stamp it off here and see what I get. So you got sort of a ghost butterfly. <laughs> and then we have this. It has rust beside it. And a bunch of little boys down there. This is the CD pocket again. As you can see, I glued it down here for a pocket. And then I've got this lady over here. With Rise Above. Uh, this is from Keong Shotwell. Wonders by Wink on Etsy. And um, she has this gorgeous antique phone kit. Now this is the other side of it. Now I printed this upside down. It's like the dial. But it, the other end is up in here somewhere. I think I forgot to point that out. Where is it? But I love this kit. I made my, my own phone journal out of it. And there we go. And this side only had these people on it. But these colors, they went perfect with this. And this, like, it is abandoned. Everybody's forgotten this. It's it's went on to everything new. It's like this size in your pocket anymore. <laughs> so I thought that fit in really well. I was going to put old typewriter in here, but I think I forgot all about that. Oh, well, it's too late now. Um, but I don't know if it would have went. There's another one of the tags you can write on. And beautiful old house. Put a little strip of cello there to go with this old house and 
tag. And then this was another piece of scrap. It's just a couple scraps I have put together for this tag. And then I wanted to put this lady on the top of it. And that kind of really pulls you in. I didn't want to cover up anything here. And I didn't have anything small enough to fit in there. And then I got this old gentleman. He looks like Abraham Lincoln to me. And another old car. That one's really old. I put me a piece of my gold cello tape down there. Whoop. It's a pocket, but I, I put it in there kind of crooked so you can see it. Now, at the back, I put this from the uh, grungy kit. And I had this in one of my paper pads. I think I did do the back of it, but it doesn't look very dark, does it? But it's um, it's got the perfect color blue for what is in this with this butterfly. And it was just perfect. I said, I got to do it. And I made this like a belly band. And so you knew it was one, I put a little notch hole on either side. See, there's those old boards. I just love that. All right. Well, there is my industrial journal. Nice, hefty size. It's, it's not gaping, which is perfect for me. I don't like gaping. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to show you. All the goodies that I got. Now, look at this baby. I'm, I'm like amazed at this. Look at that. It's a specimen. And I've been looking for, for, I've watched Crafty by Tony. And she was using, I think, the big butterfly. Either this one or that one. And I thought, oh, I love that. I got to get it. And I'm going to do a specimen journal. So this is going to work out perfectly. But this thing is huge. It's like five inches wide. And probably so is that one. Yep, five inches. And look at the big bug and beetle. Oh, I love that. I love it. Okay, where's another one? I had two of them. These are my purchases from uh, Simon Says Stamps. That's it. Now, I wanted this one because I love the furnishing. I had to tilt it because I'm getting a glare. Furnishing Undertakers. I got caskets and coffins. I got a little bit of script. I got an old flower and a wholesale florist. I'm not so crazy about the eyeball and everything, but that's okay. I might find a use for that. I could use the eye itself and just cut off the rest of this. <laughs> I don't need his nose. <laughs> and let's see what else. Um, I needed backdrops. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was trying to get some of the items that I used last year, and it was too big. Halloween journals, but a lot of that stuff is gone now, and I can't find it. I found about three different things here that I did use, but I used about eight or ten things to make that complete journal. I don't want to make another journal like that. That took a lot out of me. That was a lot, and um, but I'm going to come up with something, something different. I don't know if it's going to be a journal or a paper bag, or, or what it's going to be. But I'm going to have a few things <clears throat> I'm going to create. But I needed to get this now before they disappear. Because these are the old, last year stuff. So this, I was looking and looking for the backdrops that I used. And I never could find them. And I stumbled on them one day. And I don't know if they just didn't have them on there yet or what. But they have... A lot of the things that I used the other year in in this, I love the butterflies and I have beetles. So I got quite a few things there that I can use all together. <clears throat> and I got two packs each of these. They are Halloween 2023. I love these. These were a new thing he did. They were layers and paper dolls. And it was like a mixture of things. And the other item I purchased is the same. But you have all of those old weird looking people in here. The the portrait dolls, the paper dolls. There's moons, there's bat wings. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And I had to get them because that was some of the best and most fun decorating that I did. Now this one 
is baseboards and transparencies. It was another mixture that he did. So you have these words in there. And you have all these different windows. Uh, <clears throat> you had some sticky bats. and or No, no weren't, they weren't sticky. They were like, um, like a harder acetate kind of thing. But they were black. And then you had three different window situations here where... One is a spider web, and two are sort of a cracked window, like somebody threw a rock through them. So I got two more of those, so I'd have them. And then I shopped at... Oh, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. <laughs> and then I got these two. Uh, these are the ephemera pack. And, like, if you're needing a little bit of this or a little bit of that, I love these kind of flashcardy things, I think is what you call them. And, uh... Just anything. They got bats in this one. Poison. It has 1331. Uh, so you had a little bit of everything in there to decorate with. So I got that. Oh. Because I know if I go to look for them again, they're going to be gone. So this one is a scrapbooking with me purchase. And I had been seeing this 3D folder last year. And I almost got it then. And then it went out of stock, and I think it was going to be discontinued. So it came back in, and I love it. I've seen people make it, and they'll put like a like a gold, a silver, something over top of it, white, and brings those skulls out so nicely. But I got that. I had to have it. And then I got this uh, die set. Um, it is, it, it looks like it's it's got two moons in it two sizes and you've got all of these different bats some of them are in like little clusters they're not all together it's like you'll get a group the group here and a group there and this one guy he's kind of all by himself but yeah I, I really love that yeah you can see up here what you get you get all these different things so that's my prep for halloween this year i got all that done and Four. Let me grab it over here. I've been working on it last night. To try to get my idea together on this. And what I need to print out and everything. But this is sort of what I'm making for <clears throat> the Craftly Hall to go to the shop. It's just... A, I don't even know what size this is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's seven inches tall. And it's four inches wide. And... I'm printing it out and making it like a tag book like I saw a lot of others make. So it's going to, this is the front. And then I've got the Curious Case at Craftly Hall there, one of the keys. And I don't know that I'm going to find other things to decorate it up with later on. I'm kind of going to let it pan out the way it wants to. <clears throat> and I've got these rings to go in it. It's going to be a ring book. I'm hoping these rings are big enough because I have a bunch of them. And this is more that craft card stock. So it's sort of on the skinny side. Now, <clears throat> this one, and I'm going to let the little word chips tell the story. But I may slip in a, a, a tag now and then that's got some of the storyline on it. So I'm still working that out in my head. Now, this is very plain. There's nothing on it. But I think I would like to get that... Um, that old plague doctor and get his image and put in here somehow or the old lady that has the uh the bone face the skeleton face i don't know though because i've already like glued that down so i've got to figure out what i can do here it may be i just do a, a skeleton head and put on here since that's talking about the settlement was decimated by the plague i could just do that and then this one talks about the church and the small cemetery. So you can see the stone and everything. I thought maybe that one would be okay by itself. My my pages are curling just a little bit. So I'm going to have to put them under something. <laughs> oh, I do have some paper out there i got to show you. I forgot about it. Um, so this is the where the doctor and his wife uh, come into the house and own it and then he dies the next year i think it's actually two years i think there was a typo here on one or the other 
The story says 1865. So that one I kind of just stacked up. Now, when it came where it had uh, these, let's see, where is it? <laughs> I'm trying to keep these together. Okay. Where it had these coin pockets and I have a file folder and stuff like that. I didn't know if I wanted to use those. So where they gave you that double tag a lot of times on a page, I cut those in half. So I have enough tags if I only want to use a tag base behind here. Now you can't even hardly, I didn't even put one on here because you couldn't see it. And then we have where Jeffrey and Rose have come to get into the house. And I really like how that one shaped up. I have a spot down here for something. So that is my idea there. Now let me find what I wanted to show you. My papers that I made yesterday. Okay, here they are. I had them out there on the bar with a heavy book on top of them. And um, so I love the color of the bath water. It was like maybe a, not even a pint of water. And I had two family size tea bags, one Folgers instant packet, and I had this old um, liquid, uh, like Easter egg dye stuff. So I put the red in there. I wanted, I was trying to get red. Well, the the water itself looked beautiful, but once you pulled it out, it was really, really light. So I ended up thinking, well, what can I do for that? So. I guess this one actually blew over because uh, when you lay it out on the grass, it will puddle in certain places because of the grass level. So I always like that, you know, difference. And then this one had a big puddle. So when I picked it up, it dripped this way. So it must have blew over because at the end of the day, I just went and flicked what was left in my pot. <laughs> I flicked it. So... This is kind of what you get. And I see some, the backs are really light, but you, you get a big, um, big dark spot. And you can see the coffee coming out. That's the coffee. And some of the lighter is the tea. But you just get a variable, a, vari a variation in colors. Like back here, you can see the red a whole lot more. I was trying to get reds because I'm going into Christmas and all that. And then I, I saw that it wasn't really working out. I probably need like writ dye or something to make a really bold red. So this is basically what I did. And I flicked them all. I mean, that one didn't get as much flicking <laughs> as the others. But yeah, it's just something different, something grungy. You know, you know, you don't want all smooth, pretty, pretty papers. Sometimes you want one with character. That's lived a life, you know. Now that one's pretty because it's really muted. So I got a little variation. I didn't get them all yucky yucky. Now that one's pretty cool. And so, yeah. It's just fun. Fun to make papers in the grass. I always hated putting them in that uh, one little tub. I'd dip them out of one and put them in another. And I'd put rug gripper and... Some placemats and things like that. Envelopes, things in between. And that's just, that was a lot. Because I had to go back out there and pull out the top sheets that got dry. Alright, well, I, I hope you got to see some things that you liked today. And got a lot of ideas from this video. Everybody, take care. All my subscribers and viewers, I appreciate you. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.